Hi, this is Abhinav Joshi, Reference Architect in the Virtualization Group at NetApp, and today I'll be talking in detail about VDI sizing. I'd like to highlight that this is a follow-on session to a VDI sizing video I did where I highlighted the importance of getting the performance and capacity requirements from the customer environment. Now in this session, I'll focus on the detailed steps involved once you have the customer performance and capacity requirements. Another thing I'd like to highlight is all the stuff I'll talk about is covered in TR3705 and VDI sizing tool. Now these two are excellent resources that can help you size VDI for the customer environment. If the customer is planning to implement VMware View Manager as part of the VDI management solution, they have different options for desktop deployment models. Individual desktops, persistent desktops, and non-persistent desktops. A customer may choose to implement either of these or a mix of these based on the business requirement. Now, this session is focused around sizing for individual desktops. In a separate session, I'll be covering the sizing for persistent and non-persistent desktops. Let's go over the steps involved in sizing VDI. The first step is to gather the performance and capacity requirement from the customer environment. The next step is to determine the storage sizing building block or referred to as a part. Next thing is to do the performance estimation to determine the number of spindles required to meet the performance requirement. Next step is capacity estimation to determine the spindles required to meet the capacity requirements. Compare the, the spindles required for meeting the performance and capacity and select the higher of the two. The next step is to logically lay out the parts across different aggregates to get an understanding of the performance and capacity workloads across different aggregates. And the last step is to use the NetApp custom app sizer, input the capacity and the performance workload for different aggregates and get the system configuration in terms of the file recommendations and the amount of dish shelves required to meet the customer performance and capacity needs. As a first step in sizing VDI, getting an understanding of the customer performance and capacity requirements is very important. There is a VDI sizing basics video where I cover the different ways in which the performance and capacity requirements can be obtained from the customer. The next step in VDI sizing is determining the storage sizing building block. As the customer environment scales to tens of thousands of VMs, it becomes very important to define a sizing building block up front. Now we can use a part based approach where a part can be defined as number of desktops that can be hosted in each ESX HADRS clusters. As the environment scales and customers has thousands of VMs, definitely they'll have multiple HADRS clusters. Next step is to determine the number of VMs that can be hosted in every data store. So once you have an understanding on the number of VMs in a data store, you'll be able to estimate the number of data stores that are required per part. The next thing to consider is for every part, consider splitting the data stores across the storage controllers. Because initially the customer might say that I want to implement 1000 VMs but over a period of three years, I want to implement 10,000 VMs. So splitting your data stores across the fast controllers is going to definitely help from the scalability perspective and balance the workload across the storage controllers. Let's consider an example of customer planning to implement 4,000 VMs. Based on the type of servers and looking at the ESX maximum configurations guide available on the VMware side, we determine that the customer can host all the 4,000 VMs across two parts and so that part 1 has 2,000 VMs and part 2 has 2,000 VMs. And on the protocol, if the customer decided that NFS is the way to go and have 250 VMs in every data store, the total number of data stores that we require per part is 8. Now considering the sizing best practices to split the data stores across the controllers, for each part, we have 1,000 VMs on each controller, so total of 2,000 VMs for part one. Number of data stores, say four data stores on controller A and four data stores on controller B. Same thing can be done for the part two uh, by splitting the load across both the controllers. Now this will ensure uh, as the environment scales, the workload is balanced across the controller. So tomorrow if the customer is planning to scale this up to say 10,000 VMs, and you keep on following the best practices of splitting the load across the 
storage controller, then the customer is never going to have any performance issues. Performance estimation really means getting an understanding of the total number of spindles and the PAM cards required to meet the performance needs. This would largely depend on the IOPS required for every VM. A VDI is a read intensive operation with 70 to 80% reads and 20 to 30% writes. Part of the read IOPS will be served up by intelligent cache and partly by disk and all the write IOPS will be served up by disk. In testing in a heavy dedupe environment with PAM, we've seen over 50 to 75% cache hit. So this essentially means that 50 to 75% of, of the read IOPS can be met by the intelligent cache and the remaining by disk. Capacity estimation really means getting an understanding of the total number of spindles required to meet the capacity needs. This would largely depend on the size of the virtual machine and all the files that make up a VM, like the VMDK file, the VSwap file, and other non-VMDK files. Now, next thing to do is consider the thin provisioning, flex loan, and uh, dedupe savings, and uh, determine the total storage required for the gold and the flex clone volumes. And also factor in the snapshot reserve, dedupe overhead, and aggregate free space. So this exercise will give you an estimate on total number of spindles that you need to meet the capacity needs. By doing both the performance estimation and capacity estimation, you have data mind if your spindle count is dictated by the performance or the capacity requirements. Once you have an understanding of the total number of spindles required per part to meet the capacity and performance need, the next step is to logically lay out the part across different aggregates. This essentially means balancing the workload across different aggregates and to get an estimation on total number of aggregates required and also the IOPS and capacity requirements per aggregate. And the last step is to feed the IOPS and capacity requirements for different aggregates in the custom app sizer and obtain the storage system configuration in terms of the type of storage controllers required and also the total number of disk shells required. I'd like to highlight again that all the stuff I talked about is covered in detail in TR3705 and the VDI sizing tool. So these two are excellent resources that can help you in sizing VDI. I hope you found this session useful and I'll see you again. Thanks and have a nice day.